professor at uh, CNAM in Paris. And my, my presentation today is uh, about uh, the remote lab, our experience in the remote lab session that we, we have set up before the COVID uh, situation. And it was really an opportunity for us. And since it's really technical, I, I decided to, to, to present the, the concepts behind this, uh, this lab session instead of describing the technical aspects that we use to develop the, the platform. And behind this, uh, the, the platform that we have developed, there are concepts uh, uh, like virtualization and uh, cloud computing. Then my presentation will uh, deal with the concept of virtualization, some of cloud computing. I will see perhaps if we don't have time, I will uh, uh, detail this, uh, this part. And finally, with uh, the remote uh, platform that we are using for uh, lab sessions, not only courses, because for the courses we have uh, many uh, visual like, uh, like we are using today with Zoom but for when we have to make labs, it's, it's more complicated. And of course, since this platform is based on machine, uh, virtual machines, on uh, what we call containers, etc., then I have chosen to present this, uh, these concepts. Hope that you will, you will enjoy them because it's like, one part is like a course and the second one is more related to the description of the platform that we, we set up and we are using now. Then when we say virtualization, as it is in Wikipedia, we say that it is said that virtualization refers to the act of creating a virtual version of something. Then probably you know that many uh, machines today, many serve physical servers, many data centers, are uh, based on virtualization. And then virtualization is the way to create virtual version of something. Virtual version of something, this something can be an operating system, can be uh, network uh, equipment resource, it can be any hardware platform. What does it mean? Then behind virtualization, we have virtual machines. That means instead of having only one uh, physical machine to use, we can host many machines, but they are virtual because they are, they are of course, each virtual machine is a software. And the, their particularity of these virtual machines is that the, they are softwares, but they are in very isolated environment. That's why we can host operating systems, what we call the guest operating system within each virtual machine. And since we can also use uh, some physical equipment, like uh, for example, switches, firewalls, etc., then it's what we call virtual network functions. That means we take any material, any equipment, any, for example, uh, network material, and instead of using this physical equipment, we will use instead a program that has the same uh, behavior like the physical equipment, and it is hosted within a virtual machine and isolated in this virtual machine. Of course, isolation is very important because we can, for example, is if we have a cloud provider, it has it can have many machines. And since they are virtual machines, since they are isolated, it can allow one virtual machine to a company or to a client separately from another client. Then it's, it's really important to isolate between uh, these, these equipments or platforms in general. Then of course, sharing, um, why we need, we want to have virtualization, why we want to have to host many virtual machines within the same physical machine. Of course, now many physical servers are really powerful. 
and we cannot use only one some some application when one uh, only operating system it's to uh, to really benefit from the power of the power of e each physical server we must use uh, host many applications which means which can be uh, many virtual machines because because each virtual machine can has can host an operating system and because this physical machine is very power powerful we can have many virtual machines inside the same and of course the advantage of this is to share the same physical resources that means benefit from all the capacity of the machine and of course for the, the engineer or the technician who will who will manage or maintain the, the, the machines it's easier to to manage one or two or three physical machines instead of maintaining 15 uh, uh, physical machines then we will have several virtual machines hosted within physics small number of physical machines serve what we call servers and the maintenance will be easier and of course re and reduced and as well as we can of course the, reduce the energy cons consumption because we will have less physical machines that are uh, on and of course, the other advantage of using virtual machines is that the flexibility, that means we can transfer the virtual machine, it's like a file. We can, have, we can transfer it from one server to another. If you have, for example, one server, which is very, uh, which has, uh, for example, very, which has, uh, how to say it in English, very loaded. He has many, 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 many uh, uh, tasks that are many virtual machines that are running on. We can balance, distribute them to call the load balancing. We can distribute them these virtual machines, transfer some of them to another uh, physical server that is less loaded. Here I took the the example of Belgium, where. Uh, to, to, to show that, for example, from 2011 to 2019, the penetration server virtualization, that means the physical or the, the, the virtual machines are more and more used, less than physical machines. And here, it means that, uh, for example, 70, 75, more than 75% of the machines are virtual, not, not physical. And we can have also this in same country in Belgium, we have in each domain, government, healthcare, education, finance, etc. All the different domains are using the virtualized servers. That means the virtual machines. Within uh, here, we have two solutions, one from Microsoft and the other, it is a solution of what we call VMware, which is the first company who uh, proposed uh, uh, what we call hypervisors? That means the the, moni the monitoring or the, the, the VM monitors. And then, when we say when we speak about virtualization, it's like, of course, it's something that is new because. We, well, we, we know and we use explicitly or implicitly. For example, when you use your mobile phone, you can have pictures and photos, etc., that are not uh, saved on your phone, but somewhere on the cloud of Google or or Samsung or any any other cloud provider. Then it's it's like this uh, this concept is new. But really, it's of course it is well known with the, with the, with the, um, since we have we, since we have or since why we, we are using the cloud. But this concept is not really new, and it's not uh, yeah the uh, virtualization is not new, and it's the first time um, this uh, the virtualization has been introduced was in 1917s with the first uh, one of the, the computers of this uh, kind of model, IBM 370. 
And the, in this uh, first model or this first machine, we had the hardware, of course, of the machine. And on the top of the hardware, we have directly uh, what we call virtual machine monitor. That means like a, a software or like an operating system, but it is particular because it has to manage several virtual machines. And when with each uh, in each virtual machine, we can have uh, an operating, a distinct operating system. And from the 1970s, we had this, this uh, first model and we have some uh, relevant dates. The first one is in 1999, because it's the first time we have the company VMware who introduced virtualization in the PC processors in the x86 processors. And then we had many solutions and the other relevant date is 2005, 2006, because virtualization has been supported for the first time by the hardware. That means in 1999, virtualization, if, you, if we have to design VMM like this, virtual machine monitor, it was in 1999, it was really only you, implemented the, the VM, the VMM, the monitor of the VMs was completely software, which, which means that in terms of if for performance, it's not really good. In 2005, 2006, with this the hardware support, of course, it means that we have many things that are managed directly by the hardware of the, of the hardware of the machine which is of course, which means that it's really more efficient than the first uh, solutions of virtualizations with, with, that we had. And from 2013 now, uh, we are more speaking about what we call containers like uh, the technology of Docker. And for the containers, it's like lightweight VMs. Then I will uh, explain uh, some of these concepts. Then, as we, as I said, virtualizing uh, systems, it means that we will have several virtual machines, all running within the same physical machine. That means all these guest operating systems, the operating systems inside the virtual machines share several, all the resources, the physical resources of the civic, physical machine, like the, the CPU, like the physical memory, the RAM, the input out to devices. And of course, each operating system, what we call the guest operating system, is host by a v, a VM, by a virtual machine. And of course, when the operating, the guest operating system is executing within a v, VM, we know that an operating system must have his role is to manage all the, the resources of the machine. And when it is hosted within a virtual machine, it doesn't aware, it doesn't know that it doesn't have access directly to the physical machine because it is hosted in the virtual one. And we have the virtual machine monitor that is the intermediate between the physical machine and the virtual machines. Then the, the, the virtual, the VM, the, the VMM or the virtual machine monitor, it's what we call the hypervisor. Then the hypervisor, it's like a specific operating system. It's not like a traditional operating system, but its role, its objective is to manage all the virtual machines. And it, it makes the, the like the interface between the physical machine, the server, and the VMs. And generally, we have two types, a standalone hypervisor and hosted hypervisor. Then we have two types, type one, the hypervisor type one, like VMware ES6E, IBM VM, Hyper-V Hyper of Microsoft, Xen, et cetera. All these hypervisors, of type one are more performance, performant than the hypervisor of type two. Why? Because the hypervisor 
is installed directly on the hardware of the machine. And the hypervisor will have all the machines to, to manage. Uh, and each virtual machine has a guest operating system and application that are really running. And each virtual machine, of course, as I have said, are isolated from the other. Then generally, with the data, in the data centers, we use more hypervisors of type one because of better performances according uh, re regarding or compared or to the hypervisor of type two. The hypervisor of type two is generally requires host operating system. That means you have a machine, your machine, for example, for example, you have Windows, Microsoft Windows on your machine. And if you want to use VM, you must first to install a hypervisor. For example, you have VirtualBox that is free that you can install uh, on the, your machine, on Windows, on your Windows machine. And with VirtualBox, which is a hypervisor of type two, you can add uh, VMs, for example, a VM uh, running Linux or uh, dif different operating system that you can have, of course, in e, uh, within the, with these VMs that are monitored by this hypervisor that can be virtual box. Then when I said that hypervisor of type two um, doesn't have good performances, it, it, is special, it is because of the um, having the hypervisor installed within uh, or on an operating system. Then in terms of performance, of course, it's not really good because uh, you have virtual machines that are a hosting guest operating system. The operating systems will do some, will run, for example, some applications or run processes and this must be uh, managed by uh, the hypervisor. And to access the physical resources, the hypervisor will ask the host operating system. The host operating system will, will access to the physical machine. Then we have more layers, which makes the performance less, uh, of course, not very, not very good. You have here examples of VMware hypervisors. VMware is ES6 uh, server, which is a bare metal uh, or hypervisor of type one. And the other one, VMware server or player that are hosted virtualization. That means you have an, an operating system uh, 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 directly on the top of the hardware before having the virtualization layer or the hypervisor. Then, as I, I said, on 2005 and 2006, we had, uh, it was really, a, really like a revolution in terms of virtualization because we introduced the, for the first time, the uh, hardware support, uh, the hardware, the hardware support directly virtualization. What does it mean? It means that uh, then, for example, using this, uh, this kind of, uh, of architecture with Intel VTX uh, or AMD v, v, v for virtualization, they introduce then within the, the processor uh, X86, that means within this, uh, this kind of architecture, we have, uh, uh, for example, the management of the memory directly managed by a component hardware component that we call the memory management unit. And we have also directly uh, instructions, process instructions of operations that are can manage directly the VMs. <clears throat> Why it is uh, important? Because before the hard hardware assisted virtualization, we had only everything was done with the code with functions. And of course, in terms of, of performance, it's not good. But here, the difference is that with using your know, an architect, uh, a processor with this this the, one of these architecture, the processor can directly execute uh, an operation, the basic operation 
for example, to launch the VM, to resume the VM, to call the hypervisor, etc., then it means it's not a function with several line of codes, but it's really one basic operation to execute uh, this uh, all the management of the VMs, which is really efficient. And in terms of memory management, of course, when you have an operating system within a VM and another operating system within the, the, the physical server, or even if you have the hypervisor within the, the physical server, it means that you have the hypervisor that will manage the memory, the RAM, and you have also the guest operating system that will manage the memory. Then you have two visions. Before the, higher, the, the, the hardware support, <clears throat> all the part that is done by the guest operating system is done by software. And since the 2005 and six, with the introduction of this virtualization support uh, within the hardware, we have this uh, MMU, Memory Management Unit, that integrates or that manages the two levels of uh, memory management at the guest operating level, operating system level, at a high, high hypervisor level. I will not go further, but you must only know that hard, hard, hardware uh, from now, all our PCs support virtualization and it is supported directly by the, 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 the material of our machine that means managed by MMU in terms of memory management and you can, and the processor directly will execute the basic operations that means efficient operations to manage the VMs. Then all these uh, things are related to virtual machines. And I, I told you that from 2013, we had the notion or the concept of container, containerization. And in containerization, we have the, the, no, the, the, no, the, the, the name of container. And the container, the, the principle of the, the containers, especially uh, known with the technology of uh, Docker, Docker containers, then the idea of using the containers is, is uh, first the container is, is really is a lightweight solution or compare, compared to the VMs, it's, it's like a lightweight VM. And the objective of using containerization, of course, it's always the, 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 the objective is always to isolate, uh, isolating with VMs, isolating with containers, but the difference here with containers, we, we, we want only to isolate the applications. That means uh, when we isolate, the, when you use VM for isolation, VM is something very heavy because you have, you must put or install uh, a complete operating system. And in some cases, the objective is not to, to have something big or heavy I don't want to have a complete uh, an operating system within a VM only to isolate a service or an application. Then, to have to, uh, then if the objective is only to isolate the applications, not complete operating systems, then it's better to use container monitor to isolate. And of course, the most important thing is the this container use images that are very lightweight because you have the application and only a small kernel, instead of using all the complete operating system, you will have only the, the basic kernel of the operating system to use it. For example, if you have a VM and you want to install Linux, it's more than one gigabyte. If you want only to use the kernel with application, the kernel is approximately, it's around 200, uh, um, megabytes, of course, uh, megabytes, or I think it's going to be megabytes, not kilobytes. Then it's the end with the kernel, we have only, of course, if we need something additional to run the application, we can, we can add it to the kernel, but we will put only the, the minimum required to the, to, to the execution of the application. 
then of course it's really important because uh, we can have small images to migrate from one server to another. We can, for, for example, for the technology of Docker, you can share it within in the GitHub somewhere on the cloud on the internet and you can share it with other people to use the same image. image. And the, the, the difference is that the, the, the manager of the containers is directly a part of the operating system. You don't need to have to install, like for VMs, you have to install explicitly a hypervisor. No hypervisor to install. For example, it's basically the Docker technology comes directly with Linux. That means if you install on your, you have your uh, Linux on your machine, that means you have container monitor. You don't need uh, to install any additional uh, tool, but you have directly, you can with this container engine, you can uh, define, uh, create containers, images, and you can have several containers in the same virtual machine. And of course you can separate since they are, if you have two applications in the separate containers, it means that they are isolated. Uh, then the isolation is important in terms of security, but it's also uh, important because it's a lightweight container that you can uh, migrate from one node to another. Then of course we have some many solutions. I, then I mentioned the Docker containers, but you have also other solutions that I didn't put here, but I put some Windows Server containers, the, then you have solutions based on containers with Windows, but of course, this technology came first with uh, with Linux, with its open source technology, and uh, it has been uh, initially provided for, for Linux. Then when we have a container, it like initially, uh, the, it's, it's like an empty box, and in this box, we will put, put an image. Then in the image, we will have the two layers, one layer is the kernel. For example, a small, the kernel of Ubuntu or, or OpenSUSE uh, generates Linux and the application that we want to add and to isolate within this kernel, this uh, container. Then if we compare between the, the containerization solution and the, virtu basic, uh, the, the traditional virtualization, then we have seen that we can have VMs uh, that are many, many that are many, managed by hypervisors. Either we can have hypervisor of type one or hypervisor of type two. And if we compare these uh, solutions with the containerization, we can see that uh, we have a container monitor directly, as I have I said, directly inside the host operating system. If you have a machine that runs Linux. Inside Linux, you have a container engine that monitors the containers, nothing to add, nothing to install, and like the hypervisors, hypervisors that you have explicitly to install. Then with the containers, you have, uh, on with, I put here library, generally we put library, but it's a small kernel that sits very small, compared to the operate, guest operating system. And within the container, we can have, you can have an application that runs, uh, that, uh, the, that you want to isolate from uh, the other applications. And generally we speak about now microservices. You can have microservice that means a small service that can put in a container and they, they can be somewhere of if it is in a data, data center, it can move from one node to another, for example, for load balancing or something like this. Then this is for the, the concept of, uh, uh, of virtualization and, this, and the containers. And of course, these concepts are, are really important because behind the cloud computing or cloud computing is built on these, on these concepts. Cloud today uses containers and it uses also the virtual machines. Then you know that cloud computing is, is, is uh, these, these characteristics or features of course are, 
are known from you, uh, we know that cloud computing is uh, is on demand. Is uh, that means if uh, to have access to remote resources, the only thing that you have uh, that is required is good access for the internet, good connections. If you have a good connection, it means that you have you can have access to resources and the advantage of having resources somewhere on the data centers or within a cloud provider is that you don't need to uh, to maintain or to buy uh, physical machines and to maintain the machines. You can use only uh, the resources that are somewhere. And you, the, what is important also is to pay as you go because you will pay only the resources when you will you will be charged only when you use the resource. And here I gave the example of electricity in a house. Then uh, when we say on demand, that means you have resources that are always available and we can use them uh, as well as you we need we need to do we need them. Then it's like electricity in your house. Every time you want to use electricity, you press on a switch and you can you and you don't care how the power is is generated or arrives at, at your house. And you are charged only if you use electricity and you are not, not charged if you even though you have connected to the to the electricity, then it's like really the, the same concept and it's really uh, important. And the benefits of cloud computer com computing or using resources uh, that are remotely managed by a provider, it's really important because you don't need, especially for companies, they don't need to purchase any hardware or licenses or software licenses because everything is made, it, uh, provided by the cloud provider. You have only to use the, these softwares or these resources and it's the, the cloud provider who will maintain licenses, who will uh, purchase new hardware if, if it is necessary, etc. And of course, the, the pricing are become, becoming less, uh, becoming more and more interesting because since we have massive deployment of, the, uh, of these resources, of course, if you have more more customers, the, the price will be less. And generally for uh, the big uh, pro cloud providers, they, especially for academic people and for, uh, for every people, you can have uh, one year uh, subscription for free to access to, to these resources. And the, more, the, the other thing that is really important, you, if you want to create a system, a uh, uh, machine, uh, even an, uh, net, local network, it is remotely, it will take only a few minutes to, uh, to create all the infrastructure. That's why we, the cloud is uh, defined thanks to its uh, uh, service models. Then when you, when you use the cloud, we can use it as uh, so the services, as software, we can use so software, uh, of the cloud, that means we have access directly with through a link. We have access directly to the application. For example, it can be an email, uh, uh, a mailbox, or it can be any other software. Simple link with the simple link that is provided for you, you have access to the software remotely. The other thing is what we call the platform as a service pass. In the platform as a service, the cloud provider will provide you a VM. And with this VM, you can choose the operating system that you want to use. You can choose the tools that you want to install and to de for development. And you can even have the IS service, infrastructure as a service. That means it generate, uh, it is uh, interests the, the network architectures, the architects, because in case you want to define an infrastructure with several VMs, with a gateway, with, uh, I don't know, uh, the firewall, then you can have uh, access to really uh, to define 
uh, complete infrastructure. But of course, if you, you say, I want to have five uh, servers or five machines that I connected like this, et cetera, these machines will, will not be uh, for you. It, they, they are perhaps physical machines, but really they are virtual machines. Then if you want to, to uh, design an, infrastru an infrastructure, you, uh, the, the cloud provider will assign you uh, will assign you virtual machines. And of course, when we speak about this model, we think about virtual machines, but we, ha we have also uh, other uh, solutions based on the containers. Then here, as you know, for international offers, you can have uh, Amazon Web Services, Windows Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and in France, we have other uh, uh, cloud uh, providers. I don't know if it is relevant to, yes, yeah, what I can, I don't know if there is some, I think there uh, are some comments, I don't know. Okay. 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 Samia, our yeah. questions are after you finish. Uh, yes. Uh, you finish your presentation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Then, uh, then here, uh, if I mention this open source cloud solutions, uh, it's especially to to show you that there are. If you want to set up a, a cloud, you have open source solutions like CloudStack, Open Nebula, OpenStack, et cetera. And we have also other, uh, uh, other kind of solutions. And then I took the example of uh, uh, Amazon Web Services, but I think it's not completely important for the objective of my presentation. It's only to uh, to say that generally behind the cloud you have uh, uh, regions and each region you have data centers, etc. And generally we have several data centers gathered within availability, availability zones. When we speak about services, uh, we, you have, right, I took the example of Amazon services, but so web services, but so of course it's the same. Then you can have many uh, kind of services or uh, applications that you can use. And you, we, we see here, uh, we can use containers. Of course, many other services, security, machine learning, storage, internet of things, etc. And generally when we uh, speak about virtual machines, then in uh, uh, Amazon Web Services, you have what we call the EC2, Amazon Elast Elastic Compute Cloud that are VMs called instances. And you have also the solution based on container service. You have generally a VM that runs VM, which is EC2 instance that can run uh, Docker containers or containers. And if you want to have an infrastructure, define an infrastructure, we, you, have, you can use Amazon Virtual Private, private Cloud. You can define many VMs with uh, IP addresses, with subnets, if necessary, routing table, gateway, etc. You have load balancing to, uh, uh, if it is activated, you, it, it will uh, allow you to load the distribution of the, the to or to distribute the load among the instances or the VMs of the uh, Amazon Web Services. Of course, you have many services that are used for security, like uh, the identity and access management service. You have certificates that uh, uh, security certificates that you can use, uh, firewall, and you have many also uh, several mechanisms used for the storage. S3, uh, file systems, uh, volumes, etc. Then now I will uh, come uh, for the, what I explained. It's like a, a prerequisite to understand the, the our platform. Then, of course, uh, for 
this uh, lab session uh, platform. It relies on these concepts. That's why I wanted to present them. And I cannot detail everything, all the technical things. I think my uh, presentation is technical, but uh, I cannot go further. Then to explain our context, uh, you know, I don't know if you know uh, that CNAM, CNAM is uh, our institute called Conservatoire National des Arts et Métiers in Paris. It's um, uh, uh, then our, our public, it's uh, our institution institute is a, a long life education institute, which means that the pre our mainly our courses are given remotely from 6 p.m. 7.30 or 6 p.m. until uh, almost 10 p.m. And of course, we have uh, some courses that are given physically in the, the classrooms. Then that means people have to attend physically to, uh, to center of Paris. But we have also courses that are given uh, remotely and uh, what we call the formation à distance. And the, the, particular, the, the specificities of CNAM is that it has, I, I, I said that CNAM is in, in Paris, but it has many centers, several centers in France and in abroad, in China, Lebanon, Morocco, etc., with many students. Generally, they are salary uh, employees who uh, follows courses during night. And the, the problem that we have, even before the COVID situation, we have students that can be in France, but outside France, that can follow courses, remote course, courses. And of course, to give a course, it's like uh, today, it's easy to explain it uh, through a live session or, or through a video that we can prepare. The problem is for the lab sessions. If you want to, uh, the student to train uh, using specific environment, using, I don't know, uh, specific software, it will be complicated because we cannot ask the, the students, especially for those that are uh, outside France, to uh, have all the, the necessary equipment or the necessary software to uh, test their programs. Then it's the first initiative in, in CNAM, then my, in 2018, I decided uh, I had problems. I had a, many years ago, I had a, uh, many years, I had a problem that I couldn't solve initially. Then uh, from, from in my classes, I give a special course on smart cards. When I give this course on smart card, I have real uh, physical smart card, real smart card, and I have a smart card reader that is a USB connected to, my, to a machine. And of course, each time I want to do this, this lab, it's difficult. Why? Because if the people are not in Paris, are not attending in the physically in CNAM, it is complicated for those that are attending remotely because they don't have any, uh, they cannot test the, 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 my lab because they have to write the program and deploy it on the Java, uh, on Java card, it, it, it develop a Java card program and deploy it on the smart card. And the smart card, they are not physically, of course, they are physically in Paris. Then I decided to, uh, I met uh, Jean-Michel Melien. Uh, who, were, who was preparing his uh, engineer diploma and he who had to prepare his internship. He contacted me to find, to propose, to propose him uh, some topic. And then I will explain to him my problem. I have smart card reader. I, con I, wanted to, I want to connect them in Paris. And if, if I have a student from Lebanon, I want him to test my, my lab and write the program and deploy it on the smart card that is in Paris. Then that was the first experiment that we wanted to do with uh, Jean-Michel Melian. And then the second experience, we wanted to extend this work uh, to have many lab sessions uh, accessible remotely. Then I did it with Said, 
uh, in uh, 2019. Then the first experience, initially uh, we experimented with three physical machines. Then I told you that to have a cloud, we, we can have open solution like OpenStack, we used OpenStack. And we created within the node several VMs and of course, the smart card reader was connected physically to a physical server, but the, the platform that we developed is to have each student that, who wants to connect the server to the platform will be assigned a virtual machine. And we will assign the, phys the physical smart card reader to the virtual machine, and the student will do the, the, the lab, the program and deploy it, when he he uh, he dis disconnects, he finishes working with this lab. We can uh, assign this smart card reader to another virtual machine. Of course, we will have limited smart card readers connected to the physical machine to the server. But it was really success. Unfortunately, we didn't deploy it really uh, uh, massively. It was an experiment, we, we did it, uh, it, it worked, and we, uh, for the moment, it's not accessible. It, it, it hasn't been deployed uh, uh, to be accessible from all the CNAM centers. And the second experience, which is really used today, is uh, in 2019, the beginning of 2019, we had uh, our department purchased a cluster of machines with GPU, really uh, real, real cluster to deploy uh, a cloud. Then this uh, second uh, internship uh, student, Said, I asked him to do the same experiment using this, this cluster. And he started first, uh, and as I have said, I want to have this, this time it's not only real, uh, focusing, I was not focusing only on uh, smart card readers, but what we, I wanted is to have all many lab sessions of uh, all courses that can be hosted within the cluster so that we can have CNAM centers from anywhere, from Madagascar, Lebanon, Paris, Lyon, etc., from any CNAM center to have access to the, this cluster and using uh, specific environments for each lab session. Then of course, I cannot detail all the technical uh, solution that we used, but we used what we called the, the environment Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, uh, is based, it's an orchestrator or a manager of, the, of containers of what we call pods, and each pod can be several one or several containers. Then the the nodes that are managed by the, the this tool, this or this environment, are containers. That means each student that will access to the cluster will be assigned a, cl a container, and within his container, uh, he's isolated from others, and he can have specific lab for this uh, for this container. And another tool called uh, or environment called the Rancher for the administration and the maintenance. Maintenance. Then we have each request from outside that come. We have a load balancer that will dispatch the request and and balance the check the balancing of the the the, the cluster. The, the, for the cluster, we have eight nodes, eight physical machines with. Uh, multiple cores and GPU. And we have this balancing. And each time uh, to access to the platform, we have an LDAP database. That means database with all the, the students that are enrolled to access the, to the cluster. Yeah, they have first to, either, to authenticate using the, the, their, they have a login and a password. When they are enrolled for a course, they have a, 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 a uh, login and password they can use before accessing to the platform. And of course, we have the possibility of uh, monitoring, say, showing the, the resources that are at each time that are used uh, by, by the cluster. 
then um, then the current situation, of course, then this platform initially with the cluster initially has been uh, into at the end of 2019 was uh, for us an first ex experience experiments, and we deployed it for several courses, not all for the moment, but several one. And from the COVID situation from March, we uh, of course uh, this platform becomes really uh, attractive for uh, several teachers who de decided to use it. And uh, for them, it has been extended initially with, we was targeting only two or three courses and it has been uh, extended to other, to other courses. And they, we, we are not covering all the courses now, but we, our, our aim is to, is to do it. And uh, we have some, and of course, we have still improvements to do because we have uh, to develop more automatic scripts to maintain and follow the, all the labs. Uh, because for the moment we have to ask the, someone to check, et cetera, to deploy um, with, without scripts. We have some scripts, some programs written, but not all. And of course, for the moment, the labs, of course, can are oper operational only when they, we can use software tools. We cannot, as we have already tested with smart card readers or other hardware equipments, we cannot use them uh, connected to the cluster, but uh, it's something that we, we want to do uh, for, for the future. Then thank you. I want uh, only to show you, this is the, then this, this is uh, the interface after connection. It's what you can see. Then our cluster is called Kali. You can say for the moment, what is the, uh, in real time, what is uh, the acti real activity now? It's not completely used because as I told you, our labs, uh, it's during, uh, during from 6 p.m. The hour of intensive activity is from 6 p.m. It's not now then. Uh, the, the whole the, during the during the day we don't have uh, so much activities that miss so much lab sessions. We can uh, I can show you the nodes. We have eight nodes. Then they are here with the IP address, etc. Course the uh, course, the RAM, the CPU, and uh, uh, here we have. Uh, of course, I don't have access as a teacher. I don't have access to, the, to all the labs, but the, the, there are more than those. You have uh, uh, Android development, uh, for example, S SMB uh, uh, 111. It's uh, the same course, but you have several labs, one on Hadoop, one on uh, Docker containers. If I do this, I can, for example, if I want to execute here, I'm with, uh, I have access here. And in this terminal, I'm isolated within a container. And I'm alone as a user, and I can do uh, what, uh, what I want to, uh, this, in, in this, uh, in this uh, container. If I take uh, Hadoop, for example, You have, you have many things that you can do for this. And you have also, you can also ha have, a, you can have an access through session, Linux session, but you can have also access through a graphical session inter with inter graphical interface. No meet here. It's not me who is doing this lab. Hadoop and check. And here you can have access to Hadoop graphically. And of course, I cannot do this because I have a colleague who, who knows what to do in this lab. But uh, uh, it's only to show you that you, we have some. Then we move to enter an interface and we have some probably many things to do here. I don't really know how to use it. Uh, data information. 
then you can see all the labs here, depending on Android. It's another colleague who is using Android. Android. Then this is our experience. It's not uh, really uh, a platform that has been developed or or used. Uh, uh, we didn't we didn't purchase it. We are developing it with all the concepts that I that I told you. Then I have finished. Thank you. <laughs>